examples of God's grace and mercy. It's good to be in worship with you this morning. Some notes for you. Uh, in your bulletin, you should have received a connection card. It's really helpful if you fill that out for us. Uh, if, if you've been here before, nothing's changed. Just put your name down. It makes it easier for us to take attendance. Uh, if something's changed, you can put that in the uh, on the card, and it helps us keep our records up to date for when we uh, print new directories for uh, the church. Uh, and uh, if you're here visiting with us, uh, it also helps us be able to greet you. Uh, when you came in this morning, you should have also received one per family, a, a jar. And uh, mom and dad, it's not sealed, it's just the jar that's closed, so don't let them open it because it would be a little bit messy, but this is for later in the service. But just wanted to point that out to you. If you're watching online and, and you'll want to get one of these later, uh, just contact the church office. We'll let you know if we have any left. Um, and if you're watching online, say hello to us so we know that you're with us. We'd like to be able to greet you back. And uh, if you have prayer requests online, go ahead and type those in now because of the lag in the live feed. Uh, sometimes we can be already done with prayer time if you don't get those prayer requests in early. Uh, also, in your, hopefully you've uh, noticed a change uh, around here. It's a little bit different this morning. Uh, I'm going to have to learn everybody all over again now because you all look different. You know? <laughs> so uh, I'll leave it at that. However, I will say this, that uh, we're welcoming of everyone, no matter what your comfort level is. If you feel like you should still wear a mask, you're welcome to be here this morning. If you feel like you need to sit six feet apart, we have pews on this side of the sanctuary for that. Uh, if you're comfortable not wearing a mask, uh, that's fine too. So just to let you know, we're here and be respectful of each other's choice on that as well. In your bulletins this morning, you'll receive a, a fridge reminder for how our June services are gonna work out as we're gonna jump back and forth between here in the sanctuary and over at Ruley Park at the bandstand. Uh, weather permitting, of course that is, you'll receive a text message if uh, we're, we're gonna be moving to the, uh, the sanctuary because of the weather. But uh, just be aware of that. Um, plans are next week to be over in the park. VBS is coming up. If you're available to help, you need to reach out to Audrey so that she can get you set up with that. Uh, there are still positions available, right? She is saying yes, so if you're online, you're going to help with VBS. You also need to get a hold of Audrey. Uh, in addition to that, we're taking boxes of all shapes and sizes to help with the decorating, and you can leave those in the fellowship hall. I have ever alerted everybody on staff that we're not recycling boxes at the moment, so just to let you know, those will get recycled uh, after VBS. If you are prepared to give towards the annual conference offering, this morning, the miracle offering is going towards disaster relief here in the state of Ohio and also around the country. You need to mark your envelope or your check and let us know exactly where that goes. Um, we have delayed our reception of the Peace with Justice offering, uh, and that will be on June 20th. So that's also Father's Day. Finally, and I apologize, this isn't in your newsletter and bulletin. I was getting ready for annual conference and getting ready for vacation and forgot to put in the newsletter and bulletin uh, a notice that I'll be on vacation after annual conference. And so if you need to get a hold of me uh, and it's an emergency, uh, you need to reach out through the staff or through the SPRC chair, Cindy Rose, uh, so that you can get a hold of me. Uh, they know how to get a hold of me real quick. Uh, if anything's uh, going on, there's an emergency, they can know how to do that. Otherwise, I will be checking my messages on a regular basis. Uh, probably in the evening. With that, Diane, would you come and lead us with our opening focus and prayer? Sure. Let's take time now just to center our hearts and our minds on worship this morning with our focus scripture. It is Acts 17, verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of our own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Let us pray. Loving Father and creator of all, we come to you today deeply grateful for your creation. As we look around, we are amazed at the greatness and majesty of all that you have made. Nature around us speaks of your greatness. The vast expanse of the sky, the mountains, trees, lakes, and streams speak of your grand design. 
You have given us such beauty in the colors of the rainbow, the beauty of the flowers and fields. Words cannot adequately express the magnificence of all you have created. We join in praise with the writer of the psalm when he says, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Father, may we show our love and reverence to you by caring for all that you have created. We humbly give you our praise and thanks this morning and always. Amen. And now if you're able, please stand as we sing our opening hymn of praise. together uh, to uh, join our hearts in prayer. Oh boy, my phone was on in my pocket. I hope I didn't pocket dial anybody out there. Um, I'm bringing up the news feed so that we can see uh, if any of our friends online joining with us have any prayer requests. I'll share with you some. Uh, would like to share a praise, but I have to save that till the end. So I'm going to save my praise to the end, but are there any prayer requests out there as we are joining together this morning? I would ask that you all keep the staff search in your prayers, and if you have uh, not shared on Facebook the, the job descriptions yet, you could do that. Or if you know someone who might be interested in working with children or with youth, uh, please, please let them know. Uh, share our website. That is up on our website. Um, also, please be in prayer for the annual conference. Uh, Skip and myself will be uh, going to annual conference virtually this year. Uh, so that starts at 2 o'clock today, and then again, it's uh, all day tomorrow. There aren't any uh, prayer requests on Facebook. Uh, update on Lena Smith. Uh, this is uh, Marilyn's mom. She is now back in the nursing facility where she was uh, before the stroke. Uh, pretty frustrated with uh, things, but has some rehab to go. And, uh, we're, we're thankful that she's made it this far. She's improved a little bit, but uh, it's just going to take time. So be in prayer for her. Um, any joys or concerns? Because the one I'm excited about could be erased if someone shares something. 
All right, here's the joy. It has been four weeks since we've had a prayer request in locally concerning COVID. I thought you all would have that reaction. It's been four weeks since someone in our local community that has been connected to our congregation has reported that they've contracted it or they have known someone locally who has contracted or experiencing it. I, of course, had my aunt three weeks ago, uh, but she is now home and doing well. Um, she's got a road ahead of her herself with recovery, but uh, it's been four weeks. So that, that is a joy if I've ever heard of one. One last time, prayer requests from the body. All right, let's quiet our hearts for a moment as we go to God in prayer. In this moment, Lord, as we give ourselves to you, this moment that poets have termed the pregnant silence, where you offer yourself to us and invite us to bring our doubts and fears, the joys of our hearts, the concerns of our souls, Whatever we have to bring before you in praise or petition, we bring in this moment. And we ask, Lord, that as we are offering ourselves to you today, that you would be with us and our loved ones. For those who are still recovering, for those who are still waiting for diagnosis, waiting results and tests. For our congregation, Lord, as we await those that you have prepared to come and minister among us for our children and for our youth. And Lord, we pray for our annual conference, and for the meeting over these next two days, we pray, Lord, for holy conferencing, for the joining together of your people, that the work and the business of the annual conference may go without controversy, and that we may join together in praise in all that we do as we carry out your worshipful work. We pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to come upon all of our churches in the West Ohio Annual Conference, as there are many gathered this morning, congregations all around, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit fresh on each of us in this season of Pentecost, that would be, we would be empowered to be your people. As we pray, Lord, this morning, we ask that you would transform us through our <coughs> prayers. That we may have eyes to see and hearts to understand not only what you do on our behalf, but what you call us to do. So that your realm, your reign, your glory comes to full flower. We ask this all in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Charts the eagles flight, commands the 
lights on. There, there it is. Go. Okay, great. Uh, the kids can come forward for children's moment now. Morning. Come on up, Jay. Good. How are you guys doing today? Good. Have you ever made anything out of clay? Have you guys? Yeah? Jack, what have you made out of clay? Animals. Animals? Cool. I made, but they're just one color. Okay, but still, like out of clay, like you form some animals and things like that. You made what with clay? I made pots. Oh, cool, cool. I made pots. Nice. And sometimes people play with Play-Doh. I know, Clara, you I've seen you play with Play-Doh, right? That time that I bought that Play-Doh with my family. That one time, yeah. Didn't your was it your grandma made the Play-Doh so you guys could and create things? Did, yeah. Mhm. Mm you and her, she and her grandma made that Play-Doh, and then the, we brought it and we made things out of it in junior church. Actually, because we were talking about the creation story, and remember we made all those little animals and things? Well, I made something a long time ago out of clay. I think I was maybe in fourth or third or fourth grade. I made this. This is a little dice. See how doesn't it look like a, like a dice that you play games with, right? And it's a little box, and inside it, I even made some dice like that. Isn't that kind of fun? And I thought about it, and I made it. What color should it be? And I thought, oh, blue and gold for Archbold. And you know what? I loved it, and I kept it on my desk, in my room, all through high school. Then even after I left my house, my mom kept it. And then when she moved to a condo and she sold her house, she finally said, okay, Diane, do you want the dice box? What should I do with it? Well, I wanted the dice box. I'm not gonna get rid of this cool thing. So I took it to my house. It was something I created a long time ago and I took really good care of it and I like it, and I see it, and it still makes me smile. It didn't, it, it didn't break? Yeah. I didn't just throw it down and break it or anything like that. I took really good care of it. And when I showed it to my mom, she didn't say, Diane, that's not even square. Those aren't even exactly right. She said, Diane, that's beautiful. I love it. And I said, I know. I love it, too. And <laughs> No, no. And you know, when you make a picture or something for your moms, doesn't she maybe like hang it on the fridge? We, I did it twice. You, you did it twice? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, yeah, and I bet your mom loves the things you make for and her. I one of my aunts. I know, sometimes we give it to our aunts or other people, right? And it feels really good when we make something and we give it to somebody and they think it's cool too. Like God. Like God. That's exactly right. Because I'm going to be reading a scripture today from the Bible that talks about when God created the earth. And even when he took from the dirt and he created man, he created people. Even though you never did children. I, know, I haven't done children's moment for a while, uh -huh. but you know what? He, God created each of you, and he wants us to think, wow, that's awesome. Just like how I love my little dice box, God wants us to say, wow, he created this whole beautiful world. He created us, and he wants us to take care of the world. I can, uh-huh. you play with it all the time? Not all the time. Mostly I like I liked it, and so I kept it up on my bookshelf, okay? But I think it was fun. 
And God doesn't want us to say, oh, I'm not perfect. I don't like how this is. He wants us to say, thank you, God, for creating me as a special person. And thank you, God, for creating this beautiful world. And I need to take care of it so it lasts a long, long time. Okay? And I'm so thankful he created all of you guys. That's one of the most amazing creations of all. All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for your amazing, amazing creation of the world and each of these children and all of us here in this church and out there in the community. Help us to recognize the beauty and majesty and specialness of each of us and take good, good care of it. In your name we pray, amen. generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me as we start? Holy God, we come to you this morning with open and empty hands. We raise them up, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we may be filled. We ask this in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It seems to me that by now you're probably filled with questions as to what in the world is this about. Hold on to it a little bit. I'll explain it after a bit. But it's a reminder of who we are and God's power within us. 
So we're here this morning with a very familiar passage of Scripture, something that I'm sure if you've been in church for any number of years, you've heard countless times before. It's the summation of the first creation account, Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it's mirrored in this passage here in Genesis 2. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. And then the second creation account flows from there. And I don't want you to get thrown by that idea of a second creation account. We just read it. It's just a different story. Same story, just different details, I should say. There's nothing about days in chapter 2. There are no plants, the passage tells us, for a couple of reasons. Number one, God hadn't sent rains, and there was no one to work the ground. Now, that's not to say that plants cannot grow without human beings being around to tend the earth. It's not the point. It's to say that nothing was growing because God hadn't planted anything yet, and man was not there to plant anything either. What happens in a desert? There's no rain, the ground's too hard, so if a farmer goes to a desert area or an arid area where they need to, to farm, they have to have canals and aqueducts that bring water in, or they pump it up out of the ground, and then they have to work it over and over again to make it soft enough to be tillable. At least someone has to do this. So this passage is not saying that God required human ability to be able to create. It's saying that God hadn't done it yet. No one else was there. So there's nothing. And then the streams come up and the plants start to sprout. Now in the first account, uh, in Genesis chapter 1, this is all said to have done, been done on day 3. In Genesis 1, nothing is mentioned about the stream. It's not a contrary account. Again, this is just different details of the same story. It's like how we deal with the slight differences in the gospel accounts. We see different witnesses sharing their story and their perspective of the same events. So it's the same creation story, Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, simply different perspectives. Genesis 2 is an account not about God creating the wide universe. Genesis chapter 2 is an account of God creating us. It's our story. So when we get to the last verse of our passage this morning, we have this intimate involvement of God making humanity. It's not simply that God spoke and it came to be. In fact, the first account, the first creation account, is much like this. Just chapter 1, it's repetitive. It goes something like this. Let there be, and it was so. You all remember the formula, right? Instead, on day 6, after God had commanded, let the ground produce creatures of all living kinds, and it was so, then God says, let us make humanity in our image. He doesn't say, let there be humanity in our image. It says, let us make. So God made. Genesis 2 takes a magnifying glass on that small little passage and expands it out. And we get to watch as God reaches down. The old English word for this would be God condescends. It starts playing in the dirt. God's playing in the dirt. All five of our kids love sand and love to play in the sand. Uh, they're cursed to be born to parents that love the mountains. All of them are beach lovers at heart, I'm sure. Maybe it's a castle, maybe it's a mountain, maybe it's a creature of some kind. But there's something that draws all five of our kids to play in <coughs> sandboxes or when the couple of times we've gone to the beach, get down and start forming things. And they're filled with joy as they're doing it. And God, with the, much, the same childlike joy, is here depicted in Genesis chapter 2, playing in the dirt and forming it. Now, the passage does not say here that God's hands are involved. 
So I suppose like Genesis 1, God, by the word of his mouth, is forming the dirt into a human being, into Adam. And if you know Hebrew any, Adam's name is a play on words. Adam is earth in Hebrew. Adam is his name, earth. Yet the text implies that more is going on here than just God forming a person. It implies that God is very intimately connected at this moment with creation. More imminently present than at any other moment in creation is God present in the creation of Adam. He's right there. He's forming the dirt into a person. He's not far off. Make mine. He's there and present. God is present with the dirt and personally forming a human being. And it's just dirt. It's just dirt. At that very moment, the forming, while intimate, and makes us directly connected to our Creator's hands, the forming and fashioning by a loving God, it's still just dirt at that moment. It's not a person yet. Looks like one. Probably more real looking and feeling than anything Michelangelo ever carved out of stone. It's just dirt, like any of those statues are just stone. There's nothing alive about it yet. A friend of mine was talking about uh, a story he shared with uh, us about his mentor. The mentor was a very humble person, very grounded, if you excuse the pun. And it was something that my friend said he really eagerly desired to know how to cultivate in his own life. So he, he attached himself to his mentor and would spend countless hours in his office to the point where he thought, I have memorized this office. I could close my eyes and describe anything to you. And then he told us the story of his mentor's jar. It was on the desk. I have always envisioned in the storytelling that it was a mason jar because we were in the South. Um, so all we've got is these little jelly jars. Um, mason jar was filled with dirt and my friend was thinking well this must be something special this must be dirt from the Holy Land perhaps and that that is, is a special story behind that so my friend asked well, why do you have this jar of dirt on your desk and the mentor said oh that reminds me of who I am you and I are dirt now, I didn't say that to put you down because that's not the end of the quote. The mentor said, that reminds me of who and what I am without the breath of God to bring me to life. Just dirt. So, when you look at it, when you consider it, it's pretty humbling to think about. We're just a bunch of dirt. We're not stardust, as secular humanists would like to preach on sermons of naturalism. That's just plain prideful to talk about, elevating ourselves from what we really are. We're just dirt. When you break the human body down to its basic components, chemically speaking, there's some disagreement on how much we're worth. There's an old calculation that says the constituent components of the human body is about 97 cents sold chemically. More recent calculations range from a couple hundred bucks to maybe a million dollars if you are someone who's got a lot of gold in your mouth. Yet our worth is not found in the dirt. Our true value is not in the dirt. Scriptures say that God breathed the breath of life and we became a living being. Everything else was created with life. Did you ever notice that in the first account? There's nothing about God breathing into the animals. 
and to the fish and to the birds. They were living the moment they were created. Yet God gave us life directly by breathing into us himself, breathing himself into us. Genesis 1 uh, accounts, recounts the, us having the Imago Dei, the image of God within us. And Genesis 2 says we have God's life breath within us. In part, all we are is this. Just a bunch of dirt that gets to walk and talk around. Keeping that in mind keeps our world a little bit more into some perspective. That's not the end of it, though. Take a deep breath. Let it out. Let's do it again. Take a deep breath. When you consciously are taking a deep breath, do you notice how, especially if you're a nose breather, you can feel it coming in your nose, sometimes maybe even going down your throat and into your lungs, and you can feel it filling your lungs and your chest expanding. When we take a deep breath, we're breathing in the breath of life, the breath of God. There's something more to us than just the dirt. The dirt keeps us humble and dependent on the breath of God. For in him we live and move and have our being. Until God breathed into the dirt, it was not a living being. It was just dirt. So we have the hymn, breathe on me, breath of God, until I am wholly thine, until this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Yes, you're dirt. There's more to you than that. The breath of God means you're a child of God. Singer-songwriter Matthew West likes to request stories from his fans so that he can put it to lyric and song and write and encourage all of us with how God is still working in our lives today. A few years ago, he released the song, Hello, My Name Is. Anybody familiar with that one? It's the story of a young man, a preacher's son, in fact, who got a full-ride scholarship to college because he was pretty good at soccer. I know, it's surprising, it's soccer, but people can make money with it. He was an excellent player. And he had a promising career ahead of him as even a professional soccer athlete until he was injured in a game. He had to have surgery. And because of the amount of pain that he was in, and through the months of rehab, the doctors prescribed Oxycontin. And he was addict, became addicted to it. And it ruined his life. He was thrown out of school. He lost his scholarship. Friends that had known him for years in his hometown would pass him on the street without even being able to recognize him. <coughs> Feeling worthless, Matthew wrote the lyrics of the song to his life story. Hello, my name is Regret. And I'm pretty sure we have met every single day of your life. I'm the whisper inside that won't make you forget. Hello, my name is Defeat. I'm sure you recognized me. Just when you think you can win, I'll drag you right back down again until you've lost all belief. And these are the voices, these are the lies, and I have believed them for the very last time. Hello. My name is child of the one true king. I've been saved, I've been changed, and I've been set free. Amazing Grace is the song I sing. Hello, my name is child of the one true king. <coughs> How would you end that sentence? Hello, my name is. For some of us, we could end it. 
Hello, my name is Dirt. We felt that way. And sure enough, that's how God made us. That's not the identity that he gave us, though. In his sermon titled Satan's Devices, John Wesley writes, our fearful confidence, that's old language to say, our family trust and a loving, pardoning God is the only foundation of holiness as well as of peace. Consequently, whatever strikes at the root of this strikes at the root of all holiness. Without the abiding sense that Christ loved me and gave himself for me, it is impossible that I should love God. We love him because he first loved us. And in proportion to the strength and the clearness of our conviction of that, that he has loved us and accepted us and accepted us in his son. So can you say, hello, my name is Dirt, or will you say, hello, my name is child of the one true king? Marianne Williamson catches a glimpse of this with a quote from her writings. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? We are born to make manifest the glory of God that's within us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. We are born to make manifest the glory of God that he has given to us, that is within us. In him we live and move and have our being. You are an image bearer of God, Genesis chapter 1. You have the very life breath of God within you, Genesis chapter 2. Hopefully you hear at least one of two things from today's message. Perhaps you have a tendency to think a little too highly of yourself. You need a reminder that you are dirt. So take this jar home. And remember that you are formed out of the dust of the ground. This is a struggle that we have sometimes with pride. In essence, a desire to escape our dependence upon God, the very breath of life. If this is your struggle, the best way to counter it is to share it so that others can pray for you and with you on this issue. On the other hand, perhaps you feel inadequate. Perhaps you feel like all you are is dirt. Well, that's no more true than the first. See, I could shake this jar of dirt until my hand gets really tired, but it's never going to reach out and slap me. But if I come down and reach out and shake one of you, OK, nobody really jumped at that. I thought somebody <laughs> might, because I don't really come out of this too often, do I? If I come down there and shake one of you, somebody's going to slap me. Because there's more than dirt in those seats. Alone we are nothing more than dirt. Depending on the strength and grace of God, God's very breath inside of us, we are truly alive. So take this dirt home and remember you have God's breath inside you. You are more than this, too. It's a struggle of empowerment that we need to depend. We need to literally trust in God to live and move and have our being. So take a deep breath. Feel it flowing in. God's life is within you. And he desires to be that close to you. Think, when you're consciously thinking, remember how you feel it going in and expanding out. That's how close God wants to be. There's a reason he gave us that image. Christ desires also to be with us. And so he invites us to share at his table. And as a reminder, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. 
As United Methodists, we believe you don't have to be a member of this congregation, of the United Methodist Church, or any church, that all Christ requires of us is that we come to him, repent of our sin, and seek to love God and love others. So therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another as we join together with the prayer of confession on the screen. There we go. Let's pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to take time in silent prayer and confession as we go to God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he met with his disciples, telling them how much he had desired to be with them at that meal. He took bread. He raised it to God. He gave thanks for the bread. He broke it saying to the disciples, this is my body broken for you. As often as you do this, do so in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He raised it to the Father. He gave thanks. He passed it to his disciples and said, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. May they be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And with the confidence of the children of the one true king, the confidence of those who have been formed so directly, so intimately by a God who loves us, let us pray our family prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to go ahead, if you have not already, to remove that first seal so you can get to the wafer. And when you have to partake the bread of life. And when you are able, you can remove that second seal, the cup of salvation and thanksgiving. Take, drink, and be thankful. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. 
Grant that we may go into the world strengthened by your spirits, empowered beyond the stuff of our making, so that we can give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we join together in song, How Great Thou Art.
example of our prayer for greater things. Because without God in us, there is nothing here. I invite you to join in this prayer. Jesus, as you said we would do greater things, we pray that we might be strengthened by your Spirit to do something so big that if you're not in it, we fail. Amen. Breathe in. God is with you. Go in the knowledge that you are beloved of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.